we're here, my Father, to ask for your the revelation, to ask for you to open the eyes of our spirit men to behold great and wonderful things that are written in your word. Father, I thank you for everyone that's listening. I pray that right now, my Father, that you put your hand upon them and that the peace of God that passes all understanding will just fill their hearts. That these things concerning the end of time will not cause them to be anxious, but enter into your rest, Amen. into that place of peace, Amen. of knowing that you are going to be with us. We're not going to be alone. You said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So Father, we thank you that you're with us now. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I have to say, I look forward to our coming together every, for me, Friday evening, for you, Saturday morning, um, Shabbat Shalom. That's what it is. <laughs> it's, there could never be a better time to be sharing uh, than Saturday, the, the Shabbat, the time to devote to the Lord and just hear what he is saying to the church today. Because I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to the church today. Because we're living in a time of visitation. We're living in a time when God is speaking clearly. The spirit of Elijah is here. It's a spirit of revelation. And there is a tremendous illumination, clarity. Things that have been hidden through the ages are being made known to us. Because God has a plan for us. We have an appointment with destiny. God has chosen each one of you listening to me for such a time as this. Expect the impossible. Keep your eyes fixed on him, the lover of your soul. Because when you see the invisible, you can do the impossible. You keep your eyes on him and you will know in your heart that it is well with you. It is well. Because when you go through the shadow or the, 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 the valley of the shadow of death. You know that he's walking with you and there is no harm. There is nothing that can happen to you because no weapon formed against you can prosper. So we are safe and secure. I always want to begin by giving you the comfort of the word Amen. that the end time is not a uh, uh, the Lord coming against you or judging the world, because this is not the wrath of God. This is the wrath of the dragon, and the dragon has been defeated. He has no power, he has no authority, he has no dominion over you. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Join heir with Christ Jesus. You are seated with him in heavenly places, ruling and reigning together with him. You're already an overcomer. You don't have to overcome we do the done. It's already done. We are already in victory. So therefore, whatever is coming, whatever is going to happen, we know that in, through it all, we will see the hand of God and the power of God and the love of the Father. Because he loves us too much to let us be harmed by the Antichrist and the false prophet. Because this last horse has to do with the final showdown between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. It has to do with the end of time. The pale horse is the last horse. Because it is the last horse, major, major, major things are going to happen. In the book of Revelation chapter 6, verse 7, if you would turn with me to Revelation 6, verse 7 and 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I, be, and I looked and behold a pale horse and the name that said on him was death. The rider of the fourth horse was death. And hell followed him, and power was given unto them 
over the fourth part of the earth, one quarter of the world population. That is a sobering statement. To kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now we're talking about two billion people killed by the rider of the fourth horse, the pale horse. This is before us. We've seen the first horse, the first world war. We've seen the second horse, the second world war. We've seen the third horse, the economic Black Monday and the, uh, the black horse is still here, is about to cause a complete economic meltdown. Now we're talking about not only 1.5 billion people having lost their jobs because of the pandemic, we're looking at two to three billion people in the next few months losing their jobs and the whole supply chain being completely destroyed. This is the black horse is here, is wiping out the global economy. We are seeing a complete breakdown of the global economy and a complete meltdown of the global economy. We're living in ominous time in the most serious time in all of human history. There's never been a time like this that the whole world has come to a standstill, a complete lockdown and a complete shutdown of the global economy. We will see the collapse of Western civilization and the end of the present order and the rise of the new world order. The pale horse dominates the new world order. The pale horse is the new world order. And the rider of the pale horse is the Antichrist himself and the false prophet. This is why this is so critical and important for us to know when are they going to come? The Antichrist, the false prophet, the new world order. When is it going to be established? When will the beast, when we, this, when we talk about this beast, we're talking about the creatures in the throne of God that says, come, they release the, uh, the, the final horse. It is important at this point for us to look at who is in control of these horses, these riders, and these horses. Who is in control? Because whoever is in control is the Lord of history. He is the Almighty. Because we're talking about the, the, the seal being opened and the last pale horse being released. Well, we need to look at who is in control of this end time, the end game. Who is running the show, in other words, who is in control of what's gonna happen. Because whoever is in control, if it's not God, then we all are in trouble. So we need to go to scripture right now and I read Revelation chapter five, verse one to five, because there we find who is opening the seal. The first seal was opened, the second seal was opened, the third seal was opened. Now, before we talk about the fourth seal, I want to just bring back the most important fact. In other words, the most fundamental issue is who is in control of the seal and this book. What is this book? Where is this book? 
in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, it says this. And I saw, this is John on the other of the Padmos, and this is what he says. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Now this is God the Father. He has the book with seven seals. Then I saw strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and loose the seals. Is there anyone able to open the scroll and loose the seals? And no one in heaven or in earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Now, what is this scroll? John began to cry because he knew this scroll had to do with the church and the future of this planet. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose the seven seals. Now, Jesus is the one that's going to open the seal and he's the one that's been opening the seal. What is this book? This book is the title deed to this planet. He came the first time as the redeemer to redeem whosoever, to die for whosoever. Anyone, anywhere can receive Jesus Christ as personal savior and be born again, born into his family. That was the first time he became the son of man, that we, the sons of men, may become the sons of God. He went back to heaven, to the right hand of the Father, waiting for the Father to give him the title deed to this earth. And this book is the title deed to this earth. And nobody could open it except Jesus who redeemed this earth with his own blood. That is why he took the book and he opened it. And when he op opened it, the first sign happened, which was the first world war. And he opened it again, the second world war. And he opened again and the black horse came out. Now he's about to open the, the, the fourth seal. It's not the, the final seal. It's the fourth seal. And the fourth seal is going to release the Antichrist, the New World Order. We'll go deeper into that during my second session. This session, I want to talk about if this is such a critical uh, moment in history. And if this is the horse that's coming out whose rider is death. And it's gonna happen in our lifetime, in our immediate future. The question is, can we know when this pale horse is gonna be released? Has this pale horse been released already? Are we at the beginning of the release of the pale horse rider? which is the Antichrist, the false prophet, the new world order, because they will wipe out one quarter of mankind. That is nearly two billion people gonna die because of the new world order, I mean, because of the Antichrist and the 10 kings as they try to wipe out the church of Jesus Christ on the face of the earth. Seeing is such a critical event, the release of the pale horse. We need to look one more time at when is it gonna be released? Can we know now so we can prepare? Because as it was in the days of Noah, Matthew 24, 37, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. So we know the days of Noah were 120 years. 
and those 120 years began in 1906 because we were given a sign of the end of time. He says he will pour his spirit again on the earth. From that moment, you can calculate 120 years to the end of time because Noah was a template concerning the end of days so that we who live in this hour will know when this pale horse is coming out so we would be informed, we would be prepared, we would be prayed up, we would be filled up because we know exactly. That's why he gave us the sign. When the Holy Spirit is poured again on the earth, you can calculate 120 years. From 1906 brings us to 2026. Now, we only have seven years to 5788, which is the end of 2026, Jewish reckoning 27. That means the, the time for the release of the pale horse is imminent. It's right now, it's here. That is why this very meeting and this very subject is critical to your survival, is critical to your future. It's important that you have a full understanding. Daniel said, the wicked will not understand. It won't make sense to the wicked because it's not given to the wicked. This is classified information to the children from the Father to prepare them to overcome, to not only to survive, but to thrive during the next seven years that are before us. The greatest seven years are before us. 120 years is coming to an end. That began in 1906, when the Holy Spirit was poured out at Azusa in California. That began the, the countdown. Now we are at that critical moment in the countdown. Now, you say, well, could it be that it's just coincidence that the, 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 the timeline, we, we all don't know the timeline. We don't know the day and the hour, but we do know the timeline. Why? Because the timeline has been revealed in scripture for the coming forth of the pale horse. Because the pale horse is the most critical, critical moment in history. It marks the end of history. We are living in momentous times. That's why we got to be clear as to the timing, because if we miss the timing, it doesn't matter what we do. It's all about timing. All biblical prophecy is to take place at the set time. We got to know the set time for when this horse is going to be released. And the scripture gives us a clear and unambiguous timeline for us to know because we are the people. We are the generation, the terminal generation. We are in the final decade. We're closing all history. Because we are, we need to really look at the timeline and then be able to talk about the pale horse. Who is he? What he's going to do? Where and when? All those things must fall into the timeline. And looking at scripture, we know that Daniel chapter 9, 24, it says, 70 Shabuas, Shamitas, 70 weeks of years have been decreed from the time that the second decree was made by Sulman the Magnificent in 1536. It was a decree to restore Jerusalem. When you look at Jerusalem and you see the wall that surround Jerusalem, that wall was made by Suleiman the Magnificent in 1536 to fulfill Daniel chapter nine, verse 24. That from that moment, you can calculate 490 years, 70, Shemitahs, which is 70 sabbatical cycles of seven, seven years each, which is 490 years. And it says, 
after 490 years, he's going to bring in everlasting righteousness. Everlasting righteousness. Everlasting righteousness. That is the coming of the King of Kings. Now, if the decree was made in 1536, right now, we are just about seven years to the completion of 490 years. This is why we are living in a time of the release of the pale horse. And the rider on the pale horse is death. You have to look around at the global pandemic. This is just the beginning. Why? Because we are in the days. We are in the time appointed. We are in the set time, in the kairos, the appointed time. That's why we're seeing death all over the world because now we are in the kairos, the appointed time because the prophetic timeline must be confirmed with signs. Jesus said, when you see these signs and you look at the timeline and they come together, they dovetail and they convenge, they come together. When they come together, the world events and biblical timeline, when they align, then you know this is that. Now I can say to you, this is that. The very pandemic that we are seeing because the rider of the pale horse is death. And we know how many people are gonna die. It's gonna be one quarter of the world population. The Bible says so. Now, this is just the beginning of sorrows. This is just the beginning of what's coming. This is the new norm. The new day is here and now is the day of sorrow, the beginning of sorrows. We are in the beginning of sorrows right now. Because we are in the beginning of sorrows, we are beginning to see the signs coming into alignment with the biblical timeline. God has revealed the timeline. We see that in Daniel 9, 24, 490 years from 1536, brings us right here to 2026. Now, we'll, which is Jewish reckoning 5788, 2027. Now, we look at other scriptures because we cannot just jump to conclusion because we have two examples. We got to have many examples to make us sure that we know that we know. Then we can tell the people, this is that prepare because there is a need for you to prepare because the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. What happened in the days of Noah? Noah heard from God the timeline. He heard from God how to prepare. So therefore there is a need, a critical need in this hour for preparation. Because now we, are, we saw the completion, we're in the completion of 120 years. Now we're also seeing the completion of the Daniel timeline, Daniel 9 verse 24, 490 years, which began in 1536. We're now at the very point where we only have about seven years and they will be concluded. That means the pale horse rider is here now. The, we are seeing the, the black horse coming in to, 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 to join together because we'll talk about how they work together, how these horses will work together to bring about the complete meltdown, economic meltdown, and also to bring the death to two billion people. Because you and me are the apple of God's eye. Because we're the object of his eternal love. He wants us to know because he doesn't want us to be caught unprepared. He wants us to be ahead of the enemy. That's why he reveals these things to John on the island of Patmos. He took him to heaven, showed him these things, and he told him to write these things for the church, for the end of time, for the day we are living in. We are the generation. We are the people. All over the world, the call is going out. I feel like I'm John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness of nations, saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, 
We saw the, 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 that we are coming to the end of the Daniel 9, 24 timeline. Well, what is another timeline? Okay, there is another timeline that also confirm this because it is so critical at this point that you know that you know that you know that we are in the last days and that the 70th week of Daniel, based upon Daniel 9.24, 70 weeks. Now we are finishing, we are entering the 70th week of Daniel 9 verse 24. So seeing we are at the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel, which is the time in which these things are scheduled to take place. That means God had you and me in, 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 in heart when he talked to Daniel, when he revealed these things to John the Baptist, to John on the island of Patmos, the revelator. He was thinking of you and me, that you and me who are going to live through this would know and will be ready as it was in the days of Noah. One of the most important thing is to realize for those who are theologians, I'll say to you, you know that every dispensation is 2,000 years. From Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus' baptism, 2,000 years. And we know when Jesus was baptized, Rosh Hashanah, 26. You add 2,000, it brings you to the same year, 2026, to complete everything. So we know from the biblical timeline what's going to happen. What's going to happen is the pale horse is going to be released. The pale horse is here now. I'll talk about who he is, how to completely align him with biblical scriptures because his identity is given by scripture. He is defined by scripture. That's why we know from scripture who he is. We know from scripture what time that's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, because it's all given to us by our loving Father so that we would instruct many. Daniel says those that understand, those who have received the revelation will share the revelation with many. They will instruct many. Why? Because the whole body of Christ around the world must know and must be ready. Because the enemy is going to come after all of God's children in every country, in every place. It's an all-out war against the redeemed. If they are not prepared, they'll be wiped out. If they are prepared, they'll be ahead of the enemy. Because as it was in the days of Noah, when the, when, when, when the flood came, they had already prepared their way out. God has a way out for all of his children. God has a plan for all of his children, but they must receive that plan. They must know that plan. They must know the time, then they must ask for the plan. What is it, where, when, how? And the Lord would begin to show them when they ask. When Daniel was in Babylon, he began to ask God, when will the children of Israel return? When will the Messiah come? And God had to send Gabriel to give him an explanation and understanding so that he would know because he's a man of God. You, as a child of God, God will answer and tell you what to do, even the things I'm teaching right now. Don't take them at face value. Take them to prayer. Seek the Lord. Let him answer you. Let him confirm these things. Scripture, interpreting scripture. We cannot be just, well, that's what they say. No, it, you have to take ownership. You've got to take ownership of the revelation. It's got to be your revelation by the Spirit. I'm communicating the truth, but only the Holy Spirit can apply the truth to your heart and give you that passion to pray, to seek Him, to wait upon Him, to desire to know more, because there's much, much more that God wants to give us in this hour. Because the Spirit of Elijah is the Spirit of revelation. The spirit of Elijah is the spirit of demonstration. So we are being called to be the Elijahs of today, a company of Elijah. That's the greatest anointing that God's pouring out right now. But to you, for you to receive it, you have to ask. 
you have to know that the time of visitation has come because if you miss your appointment with God, that's what we call disappointment. Disappointment is missing your appointment with God. Now, we know that looking at three timelines, they all end at the same point because God is not an author of confusion. Seeing that we know from Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, that there will be seven years and it, they will be initiated by a treaty in Israel, by the confirmation of a treaty. Land for peace will be confirmed. And that will be a trigger, a sign. It's not a trigger. It's a sign that the time has come. Many times people say, well, when we see that treaty, Three, then we know. No, no, we know from Scripture. We, we know because Scripture says, us, says that. And it's going to happen because it's all going to be in line with biblical prophecy. And furthermore, the devil tried to hide the treaty and pretend like the treaty has not taken place so that the people are going to be ignorant and will continue the way, you know, the church has been all these years complacent, lukewarm, double-minded, divided, confused. It's time for a red-hot church on fire for the Lord. Now I have given you the timeline, and the timeline is September the 17th, 2020, will be the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel, the beginning when the pale horse will be released. It's this year. How do we know that? Because Daniel's timeline, Daniel 9.24, confirms that. We know that because 120 years that Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah comes to an end some year 2026. We know that the dispensations, the dispensation of grace is coming to an end the same time. So we know that we know that we know. We underline it over and over because it is the time. You said, wow, men of God, could that be just coincidence? And I'll come back. When I come back, I'll talk about who is this pale horse. How do we identify him? We know the timeline now. Now I come back and talk about who is, where he is, and what we need to do. That's the next part where I talk about specifics concerning the pale horse. And now I'll come back and share regarding the pale horse himself. Who is he? How can we know? who he is and where he is according to biblical prophecy. I'll go get myself a cup of tea, but bless you well, for a minute. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share because we are the generation, the greatest generation of all. And again, I want to begin by saying the Lord will not leave us, will not forsake us. He will be with us. He is in control of the end game. Amen. He is the Lord of history. All these things are orchestrated by the Lord. He opens the seals. He is in absolute control. And all we need is for him to be in absolute control of our lives. When we are completely surrendered to him, then he will lead us from victory to victory. And no weapon formed against us will prosper because he is our shield. He is our great glory. He gives us his glory. He leads us from glory to glory, from victory to victory. And glory is the manifested presence of God. When Israel was under the manifested presence of God, no 
weapon formed against them could prosper. No disease, nothing could touch them because they were under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91, everyone should memorize that because that's what's going to carry us through to the other side. We are here not to suffer for Jesus, but to demonstrate the power, the glory, the majesty of the King of Kings. That's why we're here. We're here so that many will come to the kingdom of God. The book of Revelation speaks of multitude that could not be numbered coming into the kingdom during the great tribulation. That means billions of people are going to be saved with us because of the glory that's upon us, the, the hand of God, the anointing, the presence of God with us. That's why the end is not to be a frightening, but exciting. It's a wonderful time. It's a glorious time. It's, it's what happens when it gets tough. The tough gets going. I mean, the church has been here before. We've been persecuted before. And we have overcome persecution before. So we're here to demonstrate to the devil that we're not scared. He says, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. This is the blessed assurance that he is with us until we see him in glory. And we look back and say, dead, that was awesome. Oh, man, what a wonderful, 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 wonderful thing you have done. You know, I am a living testimony to that because when the terrorists came to my office for rented the next door office for a whole year, six of them sent to kill me. I went invisible on them for a whole year until the FBI came to my office and said, do you know the people in this office why they are here? I said, I don't know. He says, they're here because they, every day they talk about killing you and we've been monitoring them as they talk about killing you. And I'm still alive because my work is not over. You are immortal until your work is over. God will not allow anything to happen to you that will harm you, that will stop you from fulfilling your manifest destiny, the plan, the purpose of the Father will be fulfilled. His will will be done on earth against the will of the devil. We are in for a great, glorious, wonderful time. The next seven years are going to be wow. They're going to be the wow years when the sons of God walk in the fullness of their identity, in the anointing that God is going to release upon the earth, the vindication of the church, the glorification of the church without spot, without wrinkle. It's coming. It's here. That's why when we talk about these things, is only to make us realize that it's time to pray and to seek the Lord. Now, I said when I come back, I'm going to talk about the pale horse. The color pale is what we call a composite color. It incorporates the white horse. It incorporates the red horse. It incorporates the, the, uh, the black horse from the white horse the red horse, the black horse, all combined together to create the last horse. That means it's the combination of First World War, Second World War, the financial um, meltdown, the complete financial meltdown. This time, we're now not talking about 100 million people killed. We are now talking about 2 billion people killed. We're now talking of not just a financial um, inflation or depression. We're now talking about a complete financial meltdown, an economic meltdown, and a social meltdown. We're talking about a shutdown of the global economy. And that shutdown has already begun because this pandemic, corona, means crown. This is crowning the new world order, the universal domination of the world by the beast, the antichrist, and the 10 kings. 
there is going to be a restructuring of the United Nations, of the Security Council. There's going to be a collapse of nation states. Every nation is going to collapse, the Bible says so. And we're in the days when nations are going to collapse and come into the new world order. One world and one government. One religion. One economic system. One financial system. That's what's coming. That is where we are. And the pale horse is going to establish that. But before that comes, there has to be an economic meltdown. There has to be a social meltdown. There has to be a financial meltdown. Because the research is coming based upon, upon according to the scripture, based upon a, a biochip 666. And if you don't have that tattoo, because the word biochip is not in the Bible, there was no chips in those days, it was a tattoo. It is a tattoo, a karagama, a tattoo, a, a stigma, which means simply a, a tattoo. And that tattoo will have the coordinates, the, your personal coordinates to enable you to do transactions because this new system will demand a global personal identification number. For what? For the purpose of transaction taxation. So that every time you buy or sell, the government will get their cut. It's going to be a transaction taxation based upon your biochip. It's, it's not our fight. It's not our struggle. We, we are not called to defend ourselves, to fight the, the system. No, we are informed about the system so that we would be ahead of the system. This has nothing to do with us. We are not going to try to fight this earth because we are not citizens of this world. We are citizens of heaven. We're going home. So the, the, the issues of the political issues, the economic issues, the financial issues, leave them to the world. They, that's their issue. We have been called out. We are the ecclesia. Those who have been called out, set apart to be sons and daughters of the most high God. Our citizenship is in heaven. So we're going to heaven and heaven is telling us, you expect these things just before you get home. These will be the things to look for. This will, be the this will be the time when it happens. And this is what you need to do. You just need to be prayed up and filled up. That's why Jesus said, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape these things. What is the key to overcoming what's coming? Prayer. It's not anything that you can do to protect yourself. The Lord is your shield and your great protection. Now, the pale horse, which is a combination of the First World War, the Second World War, and the combination with the financial meltdown. It's going to be now a complete meltdown. Then the question is, how then shall we live? That question, I'll deal with it in the next meeting. But this time, I just want to talk about who is the head of this new world order. Where is the head of this new, new world order? Number one, the new world order is ordained of God. It is in revelation. It is his plan. He opens the seal. He releases the Antichrist. The Antichrist is his Antichrist. He controls everything. He is the Lord of history. So we have to realize that the right the right arm of God is salvation, sanctification. The left arm of God is his sovereignty over the affairs of men. Now, he is sovereign over the new world order. And we are his children, the apple of his eye. So there's nothing to be really concerned about, but we need to know that there is a person, an individual, that's going to be the head of the new world order.
the Bible calls him the Antichrist. And the question is, who is the Antichrist? What I'm going to share with you to, tonight is just uh, brief, fundamental things to look for. But as far as the full profile of the Antichrist, we're talking about 72 predictions. It's going to be massive. So I'm going to just give you the fundamentals, the, the critical things you need to know. I will do another prophecy conference in which I deal with the full profile of the Antichrist. In every scripture, every prediction that has been given concerning this man and the 10 kings and the false prophet and their new world order and their financial system because this will be a man that will try to deify himself. He will declare himself God. When will that happen? In our lifetime. It's going to happen. In our immediate future. Did I lose anybody? No, we are all here. <laughs> okay, good. Getting so that's good. <laughs> In our immediate future. This is going to happen. Now, who is this man? What does the Bible say about him? This is why it is so important that we, being children of God, need to know, not through the internet, not through conspiratorial interpretation of events that are happening. We need to know from Scripture. Because the Scriptures are God's love letter, which tells us everything, explains everything. So that we will know and be able to say, this is that, this is that, this is that. Just like Peter on the day of Pentecost. Now, the man that's on the earth today, the Antichrist, is alive and well today. I said the Antichrist is alive and well today. The false prophet is alive and well today. We talk today about the, the Antichrist because he is the rider, he's the the rider of the pale horse that's here now to be released. The window of his appearing is between September the 17th and the end of time, 2027, end of 2026. It is so important that we realize that this man is alive and well today, and he is on the world scene today because his time is coming, and we need to have a biblical understanding of the rider of the pale horse. Daniel eleven thirty six calls him the willful king. In other words, he will do what he wants. He won't listen to anybody because he only listens to the devil, because he's the devil's son. As God has his son, the devil's got his son. And as God has the Holy Spirit, the devil also has the Holy Spirit. That is the false prophet. So the devil himself is God the Father. God the Son is the Antichrist. Their Holy Spirit is Mr. False Prophet. So that's the Trinity, the evil Trinity, is a satanic Trinity. And he will depend upon the devil for everything he does. And he is called the destroyer. That is Isaiah 16, verse 4. He is the destroyer. He's going to destroy the people of God. Revelation 13 calls him the beast that come out of the water. Water Many waters means nations and peoples and tongues. It, it's about mankind. He rises up from among the people to dominate the people like Nimrod and to control the people like Nimrod. That's why John saw him coming out of the water. And he's also known as the little horn. The little horn in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, is the little horn. 
God calls him a little horn, that means it is no big deal. It is nothing when it comes to the, to the saints, the redeemed, prayed up and filled up. Now I'm talking about overcomers who are sanctified. Those who are not sanctified, they will be persecuted and they will be beheaded. And it will be for their sanctification, they will not lose their salvation, but they will be sanctified through the fire of persecution. But those who are sanctified already do not need the fire of persecution. The rider of the year, or the pale horse, is the son of perdition, Second Thessalonians, the son of destruction. Is also known in Thessalonians as the lawless one. Because during his time, it will be a time of chaos, social instability, social upheaval. There will be confusion because the devil is the author of confusion. So we're moving towards a time of tremendous social unrest. Whole cities burned, whole cities riots in every, in every city. We're looking at a time of lawlessness in every city around the world. That's why the people of God must be like the early church. They were all in Petra before the destruction of Jerusalem. Once again, the church that is listening to the Holy Spirit the people of God that are waiting upon God like Noah, they will receive instructions and guidance during this time of the lawless one, people breaking into homes, pillaging, sodomizing, all that is gonna happen. But you say, but how, how then will we survive? Because you'll be under the shadow of the Almighty. You will be protected by the Almighty. No weapon formed against you will prosper because you're under the shadow of the Almighty. He, the Antichrist, will be empowered by Satan. Revelation 13, 14 says, who can make who? Revelation 13, 1 to 4 says, who can make war with, with the beast? Nobody could make war against him. So no Christian should be thinking, well, I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to do this. No, there's nothing you can do because this is a sign of Satan and only the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of God can overcome him. So the only hiding place is under the shadow of the Almighty. And how will we know him? He will have a deadly wound in his head. Revelation 13, 3. That's how we're going to be able to identify the Antichrist. There will be an assassination attempt on him. As a matter of fact, he is going to drop dead and a principality from the pit of hell, from the bottomless pit, will come from the bottomless pit and enter into his body. And when he rises from the dead, it will be a different man. It will be Satan incarnate in a body because the devil cannot do what Jesus did, but he can steal a body and use it so he's going to steal the body of this global leader and enter into him. And he will be a leader that most Christians, most uh, religious people, conservative people will believe in. Why do I say that? Because it says if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. That is why the devil wanted the body of Moses. Because Moses was an accepted leader an anointed leader, a powerful leader, a leader who, who cared for his people. That's the body that the devil wanted. Someone that was believable, someone with credibility, someone who was acceptable. The same will happen. This leader that uh, is coming forth, the whole, the, the whole church is going to ride on him and believe in him and they will stand with him and they will help him. Just like Hitler, the church helped Hitler. 
It was silent when the Jews were killed. They did nothing but support Hitler. And Hitler even changed the Bible and created the, the Nazi Bible. That's what's going to happen again. It happened for, it's going to happen again. And the people of God that are not waiting upon God, that are not praying, that are not listening, they're going to be carried away by his lies and deceptions. That's when the falling away will take place. It's the falling away because they will be so confused because they are not listening to the Holy Spirit. They will follow the devil because the devil show himself as the angel of light. And they will believe in him and worship him. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what I've seen in visions. I've seen the churches having people to line up to get the number of the beast. Because you couldn't buy or sell or give to the church without that number. And the pastor said, this is, you got to obey the government. This is good for you. This is not the, the number of the beast because the rapture has not taken place. Just take it. And millions of believers were deceived into taking the number of the beast. You have to be in the word and you have to be prayed up. You have to know the scriptures. You got to walk with God because we are in the days of deception. Jesus said, don't be deceived because we are in the days of delusion, disinformation, fake news, fake preaching. Everything is not real. That is why we, the people of God, need to go back to scripture and have everything line up with scripture, interpreting scripture. We, ne we need to be diligent in these last days because we're in the days of deception, many false wonders, false prophets. We need to seek God more than ever before because we are living in a time that God has warned us that in these last days, this is what's going to be happening. So we need to be a step ahead of the enemy because the devil is going to empower the Antichrist, Revelation 13, verse 1 to 4. And we will know when we see that deadly wound. And he comes with lying wonders. That's Second Thessalonians. He comes with lying wonders. There's going to be a lot of lying wonders. And I'll tell you, one of the lying wonders is this global pandemic. Is the devil's lying wonder. You say, how do you know that? Because the devil is the author of sickness and disease. It's not from God. When the devil wanted to attack Job, he brought sickness and disease and death. Because he came to steal, kill, and destroy. This is not from our loving father. This is from the pit of hell. This is a sign of the end of time. This is a lying wonder that in never has there been a time like the whole global economy come to, to a standstill and the whole world is shut down. That is a sign of the end of days and the coming of the Antichrist. Because they are lying wonders. And then he, Second Thessalonians says, he will say he is God because you'll be trying to solve all these problems and tell the people, I can solve the economic problems. I can solve the social problems. I can solve the financial problems. I can do this. And people will be following him because of desperation. Because right now, we're going to run it out of um, commodities. There's, there's a breakdown in the supply chain. And everything's going to collapse. And whoever comes with the answer, everybody's going to follow that person. That's part of the lying wonder. If you don't know the scripture, you will follow the, the people for survival. Rather than look to God, you will look to the worldly system and the devil is going to control the food. He's going to control the finances. He's, con he's going to control everything. All the means of production are going to be controlled by the new world order. And you're going to be forced to take the number in, to worship the devil in order to get the, the, the basic commodities, the basic needs. That's why you got to know over Jaira, the provider. You got to know El Shada. The gutter too much. Multiplication of food. Being transported by the Holy Spirit. No more having to go through airports. Because they, they require that they see the, the biochip on you. And how can you go from one part of the world to another? You're going to be translated. I was translated. 
300 miles. This brother, Jewish brother said to me, God wants to teach you something. And I said, what is it he's going to teach me? He said, he's going to teach you of what's coming, what's before us. And today God's going to transport you to your next meeting 300 miles away in another city. And I said, wow, I don't know about that because I'd never seen it before. I didn't even know that it could happen. And he prayed and I was transported. There's going to be people transported to the ends of the earth to get the job done by the Spirit. God's going to, he's done it before, he's going to do it again. Every example is in the Bible. People are going to be like the widow with, with, with Elijah. Multiplication of food. There's no need to worry. You just do what God tells you. The future belongs to those who listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The future belongs to those who are prayed up and filled up. The future belongs to those who know the times and seasons we're living in, like the sons of Iskar. They knew the times and what Israel should do. You are a child of the Most High God. You are the son of Iskar. You know the times and seasons. You know what the church should do, what your family should do, because you're listening to the Holy Spirit. You're being led by the power of God and the Spirit of God. That is why when we look at what's coming, the Antichrist is here now. As a matter of fact, he is on the world scene. All this pandemic, he knows it's all about him, raising him up to bring new solutions, bringing the world to a new uh, world order, bringing the world to a new economic system, resurrecting the dead economy. That's what he's gonna do. And that's why the devil is setting the stage. Because why? Because we are at the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel. That's why we know. We don't know because of conspiracy. There's so many conspiracy theories out there. We don't need to listen to that. We have the word of God. The word of God tells us this is the time. These are the events that must take place to usher in the new world order. Because of that, we can say we know that we know what's coming next. There will be 2 billion people killed in a nuclear exchange. We know that. The Bible says so. So are we going to be in the city that's going to be nuked? No, we're going to be like the church in Jerusalem. All the people that belong, that belong to the church, the saints, Jesus, people according to Josephus, every one of them was, they were out of the city when Titus came to destroy Jerusalem. In every city where the people of God are, God's going to tell them where to go. He's going to protect them. Nothing will happen to them because they are the redeemed of the Lord and God is their father and they're protected by the father and they're guided by the father and they're provided for by the father. That is why these are the days to come out of her, my people, and be he separate. Because we are in a separate economy. We are in a kingdom economy. And in a kingdom economy, we don't need to be following the world and the worldly system because we are with our Father. Food has come down from heaven. It has happened before. Water has come out of a rock. It has happened before. There is nothing to worry about because the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. The same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. That dunamis power lives inside of you because you are filled with the power of God. No weapon formed against you can prosper, will prosper. That is why I say to you, yes, we know the Antichrist is the life and world today. Yes, we know he's on the world scene today. Yes, we know that the, this coronavirus pandemic is going to help him to usher himself into his position of global dominance in 2021 and beyond. We know that. We're not anxious about it. We know it. The question is, what are we doing about it? That's my question to you. What are you going to do with what I'm telling you? You're going to think about it? Jesus said, blessed are they that hear and do. Not hear and think about it. Oh, I'm going to talk about it. Jesus never said, go and think about it. He said, go and do. Blessed are they that do. Do us of the word. Step into the story. 
seek the Lord, wait upon him, hear what he wants. You may be called to be a Joseph. God might want you to say, I want you to store food. I'll send the brethren and I'll multiply that food. He might be stuck. I want you to get out of here. I want you to do this. We are going to be directed, not, let me underline this. We are not gonna be directed by circumstances. Circumstantial guidance cannot take you into the future. You cannot wait for circumstances to orchestrate your future. You have to be led by the Spirit, by God, into the future. Because that future is going to be different to what you've ever known. It's going to be in a way that's so radical, that's so different to what you're doing. You have to open your eyes, open your heart, and listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, and He will tell you, and He will guide you. My sheep hears my voice. You will hear his voice. And you will know what God wants you to do. And you will be protected by God. Angels in assignment to protect you. 10,000 will fall on your side. Psalm 91. You've got to memorize that. Everyone who hears my voice must memorize Psalm 91. Here in America, when you call for help, here in America, you call 911. And I call it 911. When you want help from the police, you call 911, and I'm telling you, we have our 911, we call on heaven, and heaven is gonna step in, and heaven is gonna dispatch angels, and there's gonna be warfare on the earth, angels fighting for the heirs of the kingdom, because we are heirs of the kingdom. Now we know that the rider of the pale horse is the Antichrist, and he's followed by death and hell, because what you're gonna see is death and hell, in every city, in every nation, we are already seeing it right now. It's already happening. We are in the days that the scripture talks about. It's just gonna get worse and worse and worse and worse. You say, whoa, don't make me panic. Don't panic. Begin to praise the Lord because it's about your homecoming. God wants to take his church home. He wants you home with him. He has a place for you. A city is building for you. There is nothing to worry about this world. This world is not your home. We are going to our home, to our city, because it's no longer you who lives, but Christ lives in you. You are the manifestation of Jesus in the body. Jesus said in, Matthew, in John chapter 15, you are the branches, he is the vine, and the branches receive the life of the vine. That means, you receive the, the, the Ruach, the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead is flowing within you. That means you are immortal until your work is over. You are protected. You are guided. You are the apple of God's eye. There is no weapon that will prevail from the Antichrist. That's why the Father tells us the pale horse is coming and he tells us when he's coming and he tells us what he's going to do and it tells us how many people are going to die so that we're not surprised. We don't have to watch the news to know what's going on. We know what's going on. There's going to be tremendous death. There's going to be tremendous lives being wasted in these days because we're in the days of the end of time. We're in the final days. The devil knows his time is short and is going after every child of God to confuse them, to deceive them, tension, confusion in, the, in, in families, disagreements, bitterness, unforgiveness. He's bringing it all again as the people of God. It is time you tell that old devil, get away from me. I am redeemed. I am cleansed. I walk in love. I walk in the joy of the Lord. I walk with Jesus. I'm not going to walk in bitterness and unforgiveness. I am walking in the joy of the Father. The Father loves me. The Father cares for me. The Father has, made, has accepted me. The Father has exalted me. The Father has made me to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. I am complete in Him. I have no anxiety in everything. I just let God know in everything by prayer and supplication. Make your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, the personal understanding, will just fill your heart. God's got it all under control. 
He is the blessed controller of everything. And I have to close this meeting by saying this, that yes, the pale horse is here and the pale horse is a combination of the white horse, of the red horse, of the black horse. That means this is the biggest war is coming up, the, the third world war. Why third world war? Why are we gonna have a third world war? Well, we're gonna have a third world war because when we wanted to have the League of Nations, we had the first world war. When we wanted to have the United Nations, we had the second world war. Now that we want to establish the new world order, we have the third world war. That's how this world thinks. That's how the devil operates. Bring fear to the people. So through fear, people will surrender their rights and their freedoms. That's what this is all about. That's from the pandemic to the war, to everything we're gonna hear about rumors of war, commotions, social unrest, all that is to do with bringing fear so that people yield their freedoms to the enemy because the enemy wants your freedom. He wants to frighten you into yielding to his dictates, but you are already yielded to God. You are not listening to the world. You're not following the world. You're following the Lord and God is with you and God will protect you and God will provide for you. That's why the best of years is before us. The most exciting years are here and now. Now, if you are one of those five foolish virgins, you will listen to me, you will do nothing. It be like, oh, it's very interesting. And I, I don't understand this because the Bible says the wicked will not understand. So it doesn't matter how much we tell you, what I teach you, how many scriptures I give you, you, you it, will go, it, will, it will not re resonate with you. It will not resonate with you because it's not given to those who are not walking in the spirit. You're either walking in the spirit and the spirit is interpreting everything and showing you everything because it's the spirit of God. It's not taught, it's caught. God throws it from heaven and you catch it. It's not something you can process intellectual processes. We're past rationality. We walk in revelation, biblical revelation. It is written revelation. That's, that's beyond analysis, human analysis. We pass that. We walk with God and we hear God. It's like Abraham saying, I'm going to land. And people asking him, where is the land you're going to? He says, I don't know. He says, you are an idiot. You're going somewhere where you don't know to go? You've never been there before? He says, I've never been there and I don't know the way, but I'm going. Now that doesn't make sense. That's exactly what's gonna to happen today. Men and women of God will hear God and it won't make sense to a rationalist and a legalist and a moralist. And religious people will not understand because they're riding the horse, they're, they're riding the whore. The whore is riding the beast. They're carried away with the lies of the enemy and the deceptions and the doctrines of men and they're carried away and they will not make it because it's about the heart where your heart is. If you're hungry for God and you're on your knees, you don't have to listen to me. You just get, get on your knees in prayer, intercession, revelational intercession. In prayer, you will receive instructions from God. My sheep hears my voice. You will hear the voice of your beloved. He will teach you. If this is truth, he will tell you, this is truth, it's me, I'm with you. Because you are saying no to your common sense. You're saying yes to revelation, just like Abraham. He left everything. He didn't know where he was going, but he went with God and God was with him. We're going where we've never been. No generation has come to where we are right now. No generation has ever come to this hour. We have come to a critical hour and we need to be more spiritual than all the people in the Old Testament. We need to, in the New Testament, we need to hear God more clear. We need to be about the Father more than ever before, because we are the final generation that will usher in the kingdom. We're in the days of the restoration of all things. The full anointing is here. The, vo the voice of the Lord is clear and not ambiguous. Because we're living in the days of visitation, the Lord's coming, dreams and visions are coming to the people of God. They're seeing things, they're hearing things, because God's speaking because he's calling his own to himself. The devil will not touch the anointed of the Lord.
God has put a seal upon them and they won't be touched. They won't have the seal of the, of the devil, the Antichrist, 666, because they're already sealed by the Holy Spirit and they will not listen to the voice of the enemy. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord anoint you. May the Lord give you his peace. That peace, that personal understanding, the peace of knowing we're almost home. The king is coming. Woo! Hallelujah. The king is coming and coming for you and me you, to spend an eternity with God. That's why we are to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We are to thank God for all that he's done. We are to thank him for counting us worthy to be alive in this hour. We want to thank him for letting for writing everything for us. 1,500 years it took him to write this book for us because he loves us. And we're to thank him for the revelation that he has given us to give us instructions and guidance for such a time as this. May God be with you. Father God, I thank you for your people. Let your, let your hand rest upon them. Oh, let the joy of the Lord Fill their hearts, Father. May they not be caught up in the cares of this world. Amen. May they not be caught up in the fears of what's going on around us because we are in the world, but not to the world. <laughs> We're your children. You called us by name. You said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, Father, we thank you that you're with us. You will never, ever leave us nor forsake us. Therefore, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. That everyone that's listening to my voice, may the peace of God, may the peace of God, may the peace of God rest upon their hearts. May the, the joy of the Lord swell within them with a shout of victory that they may worship the King, His Majesty the King, His Majesty the King. May you receive praise. May you receive glory from your church. Oh, the bride has made herself ready. We are ready for the king. Thank you, Father. Oh, awaken the church. Awaken, my Father, awaken the church. Let none be among the five foolish virgins. Let everyone be on fire, red hot for Jesus, because the time has come. We give you now the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. And we amen. all receive the blessing from the prophet. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Prophet Robert. Oh, it is Thank always you. so good to have you. <laughs> you I'm have, blessed to be with you. Enough. You guys are you're a blessing to me. Yeah, a blessing to all of us. Amen.